thank you, Cahirlach. I am sharing time with Deputy Eona Reardon. Uh, Firstly, uh, I want to formally congratulate you, Taoiseach, on your appointment. Uh, it's an extremely special day, and particularly for your wife, Mary, and your children, your wider family, and definitely your community. And from your contribution earlier, I can feel from the emotion in your voice how important your community is. Uh, so I'm sure you're looking forward to getting back amongst them uh, in the coming days, and I wish you well on that, um, sincerely. Um, uh, I know you bring huge experience to the role, um, given uh, the length of time you served in the various different ministries. And I have to say, I for one, am somebody who very much admires uh, the legislation you brought in in 2004 in relation to the smoking ban. I think it changed an awful lot of uh, health issues and social issues in Ireland. It changed the way of thinking and was very formative and ahead of its time. Uh, so more of that thinking. Uh, will be really appreciated in these difficult times. I know you have a special uh, interest in education as well. Um, you, like myself, come from a, unlike your predecessor, come from a, a public uh, school background. Indeed, uh, I think we're in a minority because um, your predecessor, the leader of Sinn Féin, the leader of People Before Profit, the leader of RISE, they all come from the private side. So I'm glad that you come from the public side because it actually will influence, hopefully, and, uh, and increase the interest in education. And I know the uh, two government ministers also shows that there is a determination there, so I very much welcome that. I also just want to, because I couldn't earlier, acknowledge uh, the outgoing uh, Taoiseach and Corin Tonishta, who I look forward to working with. He's somebody, obviously, I've worked with quite closely in the past. Um, I haven't often agreed with him. I have agreed with him on other occasions, but he's somebody who's always been very uh, direct and straight uh, and easy to deal with, so I wish him uh, well in the challenges ahead of him. I also want to wish all the new ministers uh, the best of luck in all of your portfolios, many of which I know very well, um, and some which I don't know that well, or my colleagues don't know that well. Uh, but I can assure you, we're going to get to know you very, very well in the coming uh, months and probably years. Um, COVID has caused this uh, country extraordinary pain and suffering, However, in a political sense, uh, Taoiseach, uh, it creates opportunities because it has been a disruptor. So I'm asking you to use it. In health, why limit free GP care to under 12s? Why don't you just go and give universal care? It's laundry care. We need public beds quickly. We need to build hospitals. But in the interim, let's nationalize one of the private hospitals. Radically introduce profound changes in education across primary and third level, something you have a deep interest in. Why not fast forward some of the ambitions around climate change that are labour intensive, thereby pushing shovel ready projects and employment? In relation to jobs, the stimulus that has to concentrate on key areas like tourism. And I've already said that. This programme for government is weak on workers' rights. So I'm asking very clearly, because I think it now comes under the Tonishta's area of responsibility, that there is an immediate priority in this government that they must appeal to the Supreme Court, the recent High Court decision on sectoral employment orders, that protect tens of thousands of ordinary low-paid workers in many areas of this country, in many sectors. It is, if it's necessary to bring in emergency legislation, let's just do that. In fact, we will make it easier for you. My colleague, Jed Nash, who inspired these orders in the first place through legislation, has it written up. So please, please look at that. I want to just raise a couple of issues in the minute or so I have remaining. It is, and this is speculation, uh, Taoiseach, it is speculated that you are going to appoint 20 junior ministers. This would be your first mistake. I and some others here was a member of a government during very difficult times where 15 junior ministers were appointed. That was plenty. There were no ministerial advisors either. I don't think the taxpayers of Ireland would appreciate in this difficult time such lavish and indulgent behaviour. And I'm sure when you reflect you'll agree. I also understand that obviously you're rotating with the Taunish Day, the Minister for Finance is rotating with the Minister for Public Expenditure. I hear the Career Luckily Shannon is rotating as well, but also the AG is rotating. That is not good practice. To have an Attorney General 
rotating in the middle because of political preference isn't right and also it will not lead to good consistent interpretation of legislation and the needs of government or indeed the houses of Oireachtas. I brought in rent freezes which others said were unconstitutional but yet all of a sudden in the COVID crisis were constitutional. We need consistency. And finally, in relation to government departments, there's a whole load of issues here and questions I have, but one is glaring. We have a new government, and congratulations to everybody, and congratulations in particular to the Green Party for being part of it. But there is nowhere mentioned, in anywhere, a Minister for Environment. So who has the responsibilities for environment and planning? Who is responsible for all the wider areas of environment outside of climate change, particularly who is in charge, for instance, of the EPA and all other planning uh, reform, etc. Thank you.